Easter baskets and plastic eggs linger around the house with remnants of candy wrappers in them. And if you're lucky, you might find a stray piece of chocolate or a lonely jelly bean in the bottom of them. At least that's what I hope for as I go through the baskets that one last time before putting them away. The brand new Easter clothes have been laundered and hung to be worn next year or stored for the next child in line to wear them or to be placed in the once upon a child rack or stack. The bottle of vinegar used to color the eggs will be placed on the shelf. The bunnies and lights are taken down and stored. The hustle and bustle of Easter preparations has ended and it is business as usual. The children and adults who sneak candy from their baskets, yes, I'm one of them, <laughs> have come down from their sugar high. Everything is neat and tidy and put back in its place. Easter is over. How will you? In paying attention to the liturgical season of the church year, the season of Easter is seven weeks. The Sundays of this season are referred to not as Sundays after Easter, but as Sundays of Easter. These are Sundays fully shaped by the resurrection story. Gail R. O'Day, Associate Dean of Faculty and Professor of Preaching in New Testament at Chandler School of Theology at Emory University in Atlanta, writes, quote, for 50 days, the church lives into the reality of resurrection, of what it means to be a community shaped by the dying and rising of Christ, by the expectation shattering reality of life victorious over death. End quote. Jesus' resurrection does not stop at the tomb. Jesus' resurrection does not happen behind closed doors, nor is it a secret. Jesus has been on the loose for some time and urges us to find peace. But I thought Easter was over. How do we find peace if Jesus was to be dead and now stands before us? I thought everything has to be neat and tidy and put away. This is anything but. Jesus' disciples thought it was over too. Mary came to them, told them the tomb was empty. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb to see what Mary had told them. The body was gone. The tomb was empty. Jesus was dead. What more could be done? Peter and the other disciple returned to the house and Mary stayed behind, and that is when she encountered the risen Christ. And then Mary came back to them and told the disciples what she experienced, that Jesus called her by name, and that she had seen the Lord. Evening had finally come to this whirlwind day. The disciples met behind locked doors, waiting for things in Jerusalem to calm down. They were not certain if the religious and or Roman authorities were on the lookout for them being affiliated with Jesus. They rehashed the events of the past several days from the Last Supper to the walk to Golgotha, to Jesus breathing his last breath, and then to finding the tomb empty this morning, that morning. And behind this locked door, behind the reliving of these horrifying events, Jesus still found a way in to proclaim to his disciples peace and to breathe into them the Holy Spirit. Easter is not over. Thomas pushes the issue as Thomas always does. Many of us have called Thomas Doubting Thomas. He was not with them when Jesus came the first time. Thomas announces to the other disciples that unless he sees the marks of the nails in his hands on that side. He would not believe. I do not know anyone that would express their grief any differently. Thomas and the others shared in the final meal, saw their friend and teacher murdered, and now everyone else is saying he is alive. I want to see it too. Thomas wants that first-hand experience that the others received. 
And he got that opportunity one week later. However, the disciples were still behind locked doors. This was the only way they could control the situation. If we lock ourselves in the house, we can control what happens here, right? And then we can live knowing that Jesus is risen and we do not have to contend with the outside world. We can just control what's in this little room. We can live just as we once did. And as O'Day writes, quote, Thomas actually is the one step ahead of these disciples. He only wants what they have already received, what the disciples have received and still do not live as Easter people, end quote. Living as an Easter people is messy and unorganized. It is not neat and tidy and put in proper places. Jesus came to the disciples behind the closed doors and continues to push us behind our closed doors over and over and over again. Jesus comes to these scared and confused disciples. Did the disciples deserve or even warrant a second visit, considering that Jesus told them over and over and over again how death would not overcome life and that he would be raised from the dead? Probably not. But they get one anyway. They get a renewed gift of peace. Thomas is given his chance to see the risen Christ and to touch him. Have you ever noticed, though, that in this text from John, it never tells us if Thomas actually touched Jesus? It's beside the point, really. The point, though, is that Jesus keeps coming to the disciples behind closed doors, even though they do not need to be closed anymore. Jesus keeps coming to the disciples. In their confused and chaotic state, Jesus comes to us in the untidy and messy areas of life. With no questions, Jesus offers himself again and again and again. Jesus gives his presence and his peace once again. And guess what? Easter is not over. Amy Plantinga Paul writes that, quote, this passage from John is a guide for being an Easter community where the wounds of pre-crucifixion are not denied, where the continuing reality of death and failure and trauma is not covered up, where our lament finds a communal home alongside our joy. Resurrection faith means having the courage to look at our wounds. End quote. Living with resurrection hope and promise, living as resurrection people, cannot all be done in one day. It did not happen all last Sunday. It continues to happen each day with glimmers of truth and light. Though as this week progresses, we might wonder if Easter has any staying power. And by the end of the week, death might trickle back in, and we may even lock ourselves behind closed doors and try to put Easter away in neat packaging, because Easter has to be over by next week, right? And yet we know the opposite to be true. We are Easter people. Jesus keeps coming to us. We do not have to feel tired and weary and wonder if this will ever end. Jesus is a gift that keeps on giving, whether we are ready or not. The disciples do not become object lessons, nor does Thomas get censured for wanting a tactile experience. Jesus shares with his followers peace and breathes into them the Holy Spirit much like God did when God breathed life into us at the creation story. Breathing life was a way to breathe courage so that in time no one will want to remain locked away. Instead, these followers will become so overwhelmed, so overwhelmed with the grace given to them, it cannot be contained nor put in neat and tight packaging. This grace will be shared over, even for those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. May it be 
so. Thank you.